Hello and welcome to a new episode of Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Coach Russell, the Tigers come back for homecoming. You kind of get off the road for a second. You get to come home. You get a big 37-27 victory in front of the home fans. It's your first win at home here, and it's also the first win for this program since last year, September 3rd, I believe, at home. So it had to feel really good to get it done in front of the home fans. Great atmosphere for homecoming. I mean, just even several hours before the game, hearing the band, seeing the parade, uh, all the homecoming festivities. Again, just shout out to you know everybody at the university who makes it happen. There's so many people behind the scenes. You know, people come and watch the football game and leave, but there's so many people uh, within the athletics department, outside of the athletics department, at the university. Uh, you know, spending their time on a Saturday just making it all happen. And uh, it's just a great service to our guys. Like we've mentioned on here before, our home games, uh, we have a huge advantage. I mean, the atmosphere, uh, just all the stuff going on around the game, it really gets our guys in a great uh, mental state and a, a great um, preparation to go out and compete at their highest level. So we'll take a look at some of the big players in this one. The Tigers beat the Bulldogs 37-27 to on homecoming. Jagger Gillis throws for 340 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. He also had a rushing touchdown. Andre Seiler, seven catches for 117 yards. And Keelan Lamar, four tackles, two tackles for loss, those two sacks. Mm -hmm. The defense was flying around. The offense was powered up mm -hmm. there in that first half. Now, it started to kind of go a little bit mm -hmm. towards the end. You had the final 33 seconds, 23 to 6, yep. and then a couple miscues just kind of take it, 23 to 20. What's the feeling like going into that locker room after that? What do, what do you tell the guys to kind of get them set for that second half? Yeah, the message was just uh, try to uplift and encourage the guys and – um, you know, I'm not a big believer in luck and breaks, but you know, it is a uh, unique shaped ball so it can bounce and, and go to a lot of different ways, um, you know, as a part of the game. And they ended up getting two scores very fast towards the end. Uh, I made the decision to be very aggressive once we got the ball back, you know, deep in our own territory with 25 seconds to go. Uh, and that's just what I believe in as a coach. That's what I want to instill into my guys is the utmost uh, confidence and belief that we're going to score every time we get it, that we're going to keep them from scoring every time we get it. A uh, shout out to our defense. They played unbelievable. Our offense honestly put them in some really tough spots. You know, a couple of those touchdowns are really on us, um, but our defense played phenomenal. Our defensive line was a game changer. I think six or uh, maybe a few more total sacks and several more tackles for a loss uh, really just made Union uncomfortable in what they were doing. And a uh, shout out to the defense, just, you know, have been getting better every week and uh, probably one of the best defenses uh, out there. I, I told our quarterbacks yesterday in our meeting that, you know, the best defense we faced all year is who we face in practice. And that makes us so much better, such a challenge and such a benefit for us. I was going to mention the defense as well. There were several times, you know, Union started to move down the field and the defense kind of had their backs up mm -hmm. against their own end zone and they're able to come out and make yep. that play. Jaden Cray able to cause the fumble mm -hmm. that you all are able to recover. I believe it was C.J. Cutliffe able to get the interception in the end zone and just able to really fight back each and every time and give your offense back that ball, be able to run some more time down off that clock and really bring home this win. Yeah, time of possession was a huge thing. I think we had it almost 37 minutes, um, and that was a little bit part to do to the offense having some good sustained drives, but most uh, of it was due to the defense just you know totally dominating uh, up front, not allowing them to get comfortable running the football. Like you said, causing some big turnovers when they did have better drives or when we gave them um, you know good field position on their side. The defense coming up with some big turnovers in their red zone area, especially towards the end of the game. You know. Uh, it was funny, I had a, a coaching friend say, I watched a lot of the game, the score was really closer than it was. And I always think that expression is so funny because they had the ball with you know about five or six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, down 10, close to their red zone. So it really was a close game. And uh, CJ Cove comes up with the big interception, um, you know, and then we're able to 
get another stop and kind of get a, a big first down there to kind of seal the game. But just a great win, kind of an ugly game. We talked about last week, that's how Union uh, wants to play. They want to run the ball. They want to be very physical. They want to play, uh, kind of keep it lower scoring in general. And uh, we've got to learn to win all different types of games. We're going to be in different types of games every year. We're going to play in shootouts. We're going to play in low scoring games. Uh, and this was one of those kind of ugly, you know, wasn't the <coughs> cleanest or prettiest performance on the offensive side. Uh, but our defense did a great job carrying us, forcing turnovers. Maybe when we didn't have our A uh, game on the offensive side, uh, still figuring out a way to win. And right now for our program, you know, wins are a huge thing. There were a lot of turnovers in the mm -hmm. game. I had made a mention of it. I believe there was about nine, well, there were eight turnovers, mm -hmm. four from each side. Yep. There were five fumbles, four interceptions. Four of those fumbles were lost. Yep. And do you – what could you account maybe? Did you see anything special out there that was maybe forcing those to pop up a little bit more? Because we haven't really seen, you know, we haven't been a turnover heavy offense yeah. or really for that matter a turn turnover heavy defense, at least not that many. Yeah, you know, you get the, the, the muff punt, uh, which was one of our turnovers. Then you get a tip ball for an interception, then kind of a, a strip sack as Jaguar was throwing. So three of those are just kind of uh, unique and, again, you know, not luck or anything like that, but just kind of a break that goes their way. Uh, and then we had one bad interception, which quarterbacks are going to throw interceptions. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, and then I know uh, we fumbled the ball once more and were able to get on it. But forcing turnovers was great as well, right? So even though we had four, to be able to force four and get even in that turnover battle was a huge thing. I mean, if we have our four and we only get two, it's probably a different game. So our defense is doing a great job. I know that's been a point of emphasis for our defensive staff in practice is getting the ball out, uh, you know, making plays when the ball's in the air. And that's huge. You know, I'm an offensive guy, so I always tell the defense, the more turnovers you get, the better. It gives us more chance, chances to go and score. Uh, and it's, again, it's just something our defensive staff has done a great job of that our guys are buying into in practice. Uh, and now we've got to respond, like you said, on the offensive side of really trying to limit those. Uh, even in your games where you're just going to have some things that happen, trying to turn those four into two can be a huge thing for us. And we saw Gillis really use his feet a lot mm -hmm. more in this game. Was that a point of emphasis going forward? I know he had a, the 16-yard touchdown yeah. run and diving for the pylon, mm -hmm. giving a little bit of a different look from him this game was kind of refreshing to see from the quarterback position. Definitely something we've talked about. Uh, teams uh, will give that up a lot, especially as well as Jagger can throw the ball, as well as our receivers uh, can get open downfield and make some big plays downfield. That's a element of our offense that can uh, be a game changer because now the teams have to start to account for the quarterback. Now that opens the guys up more downfield. Uh, maybe now that helps our run game in general. Um, but you know, QB, the specific run games, I mean, we're not going to tell our quarterbacks we're not going to be Ohio State with JT Barrett running it 25 times a game. But if they can do it a handful of times a game, it is a game changer because now again, the defense has to count for that extra guy, which is the quarterback. And uh, that opens up more run for the running back. Uh, that opens up play action, RPO, all the stuff we love to do. And Jagger has the ability to do that. I mean, he is a good athlete. Um, you know, he's a, he's a guy that can definitely eat yards when the defense presents it. And now just being willing, uh, trusting his progression drops, all those things can definitely be a, a game changer for us moving forward. We're going to step away and come back, and we'll be back on Under Center with Jake Russell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Hello and welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. With me this week is the Assistant Sports Information Director, Zachary Clements. Zach, I'm so excited to have you on. We run in the same circle so much. We work side by side for the most part. It's nice to have a familiar face across from me this time. Let's talk to them just a little bit about what you do, what your office does on campus here because you all are everywhere, you do a little bit of everything, and you have plenty of teams to work with. Absolutely, we have uh, 32 teams here, uh, over 20 sports, and our office as a whole is responsible for photography, videography, stats, uh, website, graphics, social media, and that's all for all 32 teams. Uh, me specifically, I'm in charge of the uh, creative video side of things. Also, a dabble in the photos and graphics and stuff. It's just really whatever. We're really understaffed for full-time people. We just luckily hired Ashlyn Elmore just recently to help with that. So we had three people, but now we're up to four, and we all just kind of divide up schedules and rosters and who's going to cover what events on what way. And then um, we travel on the road and stuff. Uh, Postseason takes precedent, obviously, but then you have uh, home events, and then if we can sneak away to an away, and then hopefully we can get away to uh, the football game this weekend, a big matchup here for Campbellsville after coming off that big win against Union. But uh, we do a little bit of everything, and uh, we manage over, I think we have 12 to 15 students that work for us too, uh, split up into videography, photography, social media graphics, whatever they want. And then also uh, Sheldon Dawson, who is the head SID, he has, he's teaching a class right now, and they are responsible for coming in and helping us. They have to do one game of photos, videography, social media, and then one of their choice, and that's gonna be used as a project portfolio piece going towards the end of their class. So it's all about really getting our job done, but it's also in that field, you have to get your hands on an experience, and that's how I personally got started and how they got started. So it's really teaching them and letting them grow and kind of spread their wings. So these students just get to come in and they say, hey, you know, this is something that we're really interested in, and you all just work to plug them in to wherever it is, and you just give them, you know, the most exp expensive piece of equipment, right? Exactly. You know, these cameras exactly. we're using aren't cheap. So, yeah. you know, you give them that, and then you just say, run with it. You try to give them the guidelines, and then they just get going and before you know it they are posting and you get to see a lot of what they do as well as you all of course um, on the Facebook page on all the social yeah. medias I mean countless social media pages but yeah yeah they uh, we, we're really fortunate uh, the uh, university really has bought into what we do and got us um, a pretty nice equipment budget to where we can get about one major upgrade a year and this year that just happened to be a photography camera and it just bounces back and forth the year before. We got three new videography cameras and I got my own, which is kind of nice. But yeah, they come in and we'll give them about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, typically a lot of these kids come in and they've done their research or they've shot video. Uh, we have a lot of international students that work in our office, which is really key here because they come in and work part-time for us because they don't qualify for work study or work ship. And then they've had that experience back home and they bring that over here and they just hit the ground running. And there's only so much that you can teach them about settings of a camera. It's about learning how to get a shot and what's gonna flow better, what's gonna look better. So that's experience. And obviously in that class, Sheldon's teaching them hands-on. A lot of them actually don't have experience. So that's kind of cool and new to us because we teach them a little bit more than we do obviously our part-timers, but we get our part-timers enough to where I can go travel to an away event and I feel comfortable leaving two back here to cover my job. So then that's more sports getting covered and that's kind of the, uh, the big goal. Well, you were also given an award. You were the Assistant 
Sports Information Director of the Year for the Mid-South Conference. So I want to congratulate you on Thank that. You. I know you got recognized at the football game, but you do a whole lot of hard work around here. That's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. How many people get to see your face? They might see them in Brett's uh, pictures on Facebook. Yeah. But other than that, to connect that video to the face, I mean, you do such good work with the creative video, and you covered me as an athlete. And it was just such, it's, it's so special for these athletes to get coverage at this level of what we get to do at the NAI level. Like, there's not too many people that get coverage like that. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's all a big office. Uh, I won't take full credit for anything that I do. Uh, it starts at the top with Rusty buying into us whenever I got hired. They created this position for me. This is now year six. I'm getting old now. So uh, watching a lot of people grow up and then they bought into me and it started with just the live streaming and getting my hands on a camera and just growing all the way to the top. But obviously it wouldn't be Jim Hardy, grateful for that. He's had our back fighting for us, getting us positions, getting us uh, more part-time budget, just allowing to get the kids in there. But yeah, if it's an office full of people. It's not just me. I, I like to take a little bit of credit, but I like to be behind the camera. They always said I had the perfect face for radio. So now I guess you I guess you get the video side of things. But yeah, no, I really appreciate it. And uh, I really love what I do here. So you've been around, you said six years now, yeah. and you were a student before that. Let's talk about you know, maybe some of your favorite sports memories here at Campbellsville. You know, you've you've seen some good, you've seen some bad, you've seen some crazy. Yeah. What have been some of the best sports memories? You can go from student and you can go as, you know, things that you got to cover, things you get to do. Because you've kind of been around, you've done color commentary with me, you've ran play-by-play, -play, yeah. you've been in my spot before, and you've done a lot of different things. So let's just talk about maybe what those look like for you. Uh, one of my favorite sports memories, obviously, is uh, traveling with women's wrestling. Uh, they're one of the most prestigious teams we have here, and we go to North Dakota about every single year, really. Now, the travel part's not really the great because it's uh, three foot of snow and blizzards up there, but uh, watching them win national championships after national championships, I think they won three in a row. Uh, last year was the first year they didn't, but they still got top four. and. Uh, women's wrestling is really, really fun to watch. They win conference uh, basketball national championships. That was one of the first, uh, I think it was back in 2016 when they made it, or maybe it was the 16, 17 year when Emily Fox, they made that big run in the national tournament. Um, I was there for that. Um, there's been so many. Uh, I think a lot of the new sports, so last year when women's flag football got kicked off, uh, a big NFL partnership. Uh, getting that going. I got to travel down to Tennessee with them and watch them play four to five games. Um, that's the really interesting part about my job is I can't really have a whole lot of favorite moments because there's so many. I mean, we have 32 teams yeah. for every single year. Um, another big time moment was whenever I was, I think it was my first year when Nick Ratliff won the college Bassmasters and we were on uh, Bassmasters Classic and stuff like that. Uh, we were on ESPN going out to travel for that and watching him win that and just kind of seeing the emotions behind it all and we knew everything that was going down because we had the weights and stuff. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. He was up. We had a lightning delay. The, they split up into two, two four-hour periods. And the first one got cut short by two and a half hours. Well, he was already up 11 pounds. Well, then the weather cleared up and we go back out. And then uh, no one, the guy from West Virginia, wound up catching like 14 pounds in the next hour. So Nick's just trailing, trailing. He's not catching any fish. And then... He had this honey hole he went to every single day in the morning, and then he went back the last 30 minutes and caught, I think it was two or three more, and that put him like four ounces above Nolan from West Virginia. So like knowing that, and then like we're in a separate boat, but like we're right beside of him, but getting to watch him go back and like he had no idea, and then seeing all the fan support there and Bassmaster and uh, Bass obviously used all of our photos and videos, so that was pretty cool. And that, that was probably being a part of a national championship, that was probably one of the best feelings there. Well, I appreciate your time and stopping by. We'll let you get back. You've got 32 teams to cover, so <laughs> I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. When we come back, we'll sit down with head coach Jake Russell to talk about the upcoming matchup with the Phoenix of Cumberland here on Under Center with Jake Russell.
Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Let's go see your room. Welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Coach, the Tigers go on the road. They play the Phoenix of Cumberland University. Now, this Phoenix team has had a little bit of an odd mm -hmm. schedule. They've already had three weeks off through their first about three weeks of game or three games mm -hmm. and three weeks off. They had a big two week break and then they got another bye week coming in off of their win over KCU. They took a close win in overtime against Weber. Mm -hmm. But they also took a four-touchdown loss to Union, the team you just played, at the very beginning of the season. So are you able to make heads and tails of this team just yet? What, have, what are you being able to see in the film? Yeah, I think they're a, a much improved and totally different team than the team that got beat by Union. Uh, those weeks off have been huge for them. You know, they're uh, schedule lining up where they get some of their bye weeks early. Uh, had a great win, I, I think, in overtime versus uh, Weber, which is a really solid program, always really good defensively. <clears throat> and then ran the ball for almost 600 yards against uh, KCU. They're another team that's going to want to uh, run the ball, be very physical, uh, kind of play an ugly game in a sense, uh, try to make us uncomfortable in what we're doing, probably trying to keep the score a little bit lower. I uh, probably don't want to get in a shootout. But now our conference play starts, you know, a message to our guys, to our staff today uh, and yesterday as well is that now every team we play from here on out, you know, is playing with the full deck. These are the best of the best in the country. It's why our conference is the best NAI uh, athletics conference, football conference for sure, uh, in the nation. All these teams uh, that will play the last six games are, um, you know, NAI powers. They're teams that's athletic programs win championships every year. That's football teams have all been good at certain times. Uh, and it's exciting, all great uh, atmospheres, everything like that. And we've got to start 1-0 in the conference to have a chance to win the conference. But uh, a solid football team, uh, one of a uh, uh, coach for our defensive coordinator, right, who's new to the conference said, you know, I turned on the film and these guys physically already looked different. And that's going to be a reality of our conference that we're going to go play very, very talented teams every week. There's no easy wins in our conference. So several points I'd like to elaborate on there. This is a team that rushes – about two thirds of its mm -hmm. offense. This is its primary goal. So what, how do you prepare for a team that rushes so much? We haven't really seen a team that rushes mm -hmm. you know, as much as they do. So how do you go about preparing for a team like that? Yeah, you try to make them play, you know, left-handed in a sense where you try to, there's really two strategies. Either you say, well, let's take away the opposite of that and just really, you know, kind of let them get theirs in the rushing game and take away everything else, or you go and attack their biggest strength. And I think that's, you know, what we plan to do. It's a... Uh, it's one of our, our biggest strengths is our defensive line and our box on the defensive side. And then also the confidence in our DBs to kind of load the box uh, and really do a great job stopping the run, having the confidence in our DBs to take care of business on the back end. And, and we have that. I think that's been uh, proven and shown through our guys. Um, but also just matching the physicality. Uh, we just played a team that's been the most physical we played up to this point in Union. Uh, and I thought overall we did a really good job. And, and I told our guys before the game, uh, we can't just match the physical uh, physicality of them, right? Uh, we've got to exceed it, and that's the reason we practice so hard. That's the reason we're full pad, full go, full tackle football twice a week in practice. 
Uh, and I think that really paid off uh, Saturday, finding a way to win that game. Uh, and I think it will pay off this Saturday as well. This is a team <clears throat> last year that when the Tigers hit the road to take on the Phoenix, it was an air raid, mm -hmm. right? Luke Holloway goes for about 500 yards. He throws for about five touchdowns. This is a very different look of an offense mm -hmm. just in a year now. Two of the receivers aren't back from last year, but they had the same quarterback, the same running backs, and it completely switches on its head and it's turned to a much more rushing game. And Holloway doesn't seem to throw the ball near as much as he did then. Can you account maybe for any of the difference from last year to this? Yeah, obviously, you know, losing a couple of super talented receivers probably play, plays a little uh, – hand in that, but they do have the ability to throw the ball. Uh, that's something, again, that we just talked about. You know, if we're going to take away the run, our DBs have got to do a great job winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups, being in the right uh, place, not getting overly aggressive uh, with play action, things like that. So uh, while they've ran the ball a lot, ran it very effectively, um, again, I think that's more uh, to their strategy and shortening the game and playing a little bit of uh, physical downhill football. Uh, but don't get wrong, they will uh, throw the ball. They do have the ability to throw the ball. And, and so that's something we're definitely prepared for and going to practice all week. Um, and again, you know, they've won their last two games. They're coming in uh, with confidence. It's a home game for them. Uh, we're, we've still got to figure out a way to go and travel and win a conference football game uh, in a good atmosphere against a conference opponent. And so we're really looking forward to the challenge on Saturday. Your first conference opponent, mm -hmm. you mentioned, and this environment is pretty hostile. We were there last year. It's a lot more packed in. I think you get just about as many people as you do at Bluefield, but as mm -hmm. we mentioned before, it's such a big stadium. Yeah. It's hard for it to feel like it's all kind of compressed down on you on the field. So how do you go about maybe throughout this week prepping your team for such a hostile environment. It only gets more hostile from here, right? You go and mm -hmm. take on big-time conference opponents. Yeah. You take on Georgetown. You take on the Blue Raiders of Lindsey Wilson. Yeah. I, what do you do moving into this conference schedule to get them ready for these types of environments? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the draw. And, and when I came here as a player, it's the draw, big draw and coming back as a coach is playing in the best conference in NAI football, going into some of the best NAI schools, university-wise, athletics-wise, into these environments and uh, going and trying to get a big win there. Uh, our team learned how to do that, right? We learned how to win, you know, kind of a blowout game. We learned how to win a closer, ugly game. Now can you learn how to go on the road in these type of environments and learn how to win, how to create your own energy? That'll be the big thing this week in practice is how fired up can we be to stretch on a Tuesday? How fired up can we be to do, you know, scout team on a Wednesday? When you can learn how to do those things at a high level, then going in and playing Saturday, you know, it's just kind of old hat at that point. It's muscle memory. It's creating your own energy when nobody's in the stands, right? You get the packed stands on Saturdays for our home games, but we practice in that same stadium three times a week where there's nobody in the stands. And our guys have done a really good job, and that's something we've talked about um, on both sides of the ball and special teams is how do we get what we're doing in practice and that energy we're getting in practice to go into Saturday, not only in a home game where the energy is easy, but going into an environment like a Cumberland, Tennessee, um, you know, where the energy will be on their side, right? We'll have less fans there, of course. We won't have our band there. We won't have our cheerleaders there, dance team, all this stuff. And so how do we go into those environments and still play with a great level of energy and passion? And it's a great test. It's, it's as we're trying to build this thing brick by brick, build this program year one. Uh, this is a big, great opportunity for us and also to uh, kind of get ourselves and establish where we want to be in the conference. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time. We'll let you step away and get back to your busy practice mm -hmm. schedule. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I'd like to thank Coach Russell for stopping by today. The Tigers will take on the Cumberland Phoenix. Uh, that one will be in Lebanon, Tennessee. That is at 7 p.m. It's a 7 p.m. kickoff. You can follow us for the action on 88.7 The Tiger. Myself and Brett Sow will be there. You can also download the TuneIn app and follow, find us at WLCU-FM. I'm Colin Sheffield. Thank you for joining Under Center with Jake Russell.